Hi everyone, summer is here and that means it's strawberry season. In today's video, I'm sharing three things you can do with strawberries to make the most of this delicious fruit. Not only are strawberries incredibly tasty, as we all know, but they're also packed with vitamins, antioxidants, and fiber, so I want to use them as much as possible while they are in season. And with that, let's make some delicious strawberry meals. In my family, we really like having some sort of a pie or cake for breakfast. And so with the fresh strawberries, of course, making a strawberry pie is definitely my go-to. First things first, I have to clean up all of those strawberries, which I guess is the most annoying part about having fresh strawberries, but hey, it's worth the result. Now, what I want to talk about here with this pie, it's pretty straightforward, except for one step, and that is you need to whip up the egg whites. Now, if you've ever tried that, maybe you found it really difficult, maybe you found that it took you a really long time, and that's because when you're trying to whip up the egg whites, you need to make sure that there is absolutely no fat or grease coming into contact with those egg whites. And that's also why you will see me here cleaning my bowl with um, like a tea towel or a paper towel. And you want to use bowls that are either metal or glass. If you use plastic, because of the porousness of the plastic, it's a lot more common that you just have grease in the bowl. And so it's a lot more difficult to whip up those egg whites. And so I cleaned the bowl. I also had the eggs at room temperature and it really was just a very quick five minute job. And it was done. And you know it's done when you can pick up the bowl like this, turn it upside down and nothing happens. <laughs> the egg whites don't fall out and they form all these nice peaks um, at the top. I'm then mixing the egg yolks and all of the sugar. I'm using vanilla sugar and just regular white sugar as well. Into that mixture, I'm then adding some oil and milk as well. After that comes in the flour and the baking powder. And then what I always found a little bit confusing in the recipes where you had this whipped egg white in it is that they said to fold the whipped egg whites and I was always like what the hell does fold it in mean um, well I figured it just means you want to be really careful because the whole reason why you were whipping up the egg whites is to get all these air bubbles into the mixture and you don't want to burst those air bubbles by being too forceful with the mixing afterwards I'm lining my baking dish with some uh, baking paper and then pouring the mixture in again, trying to be careful, laying all of the strawberries on top of it and then I'm putting it into the oven at 100 and 170 degrees Celsius and baking that until it is golden at the top. So hopefully you agree that this pie was super simple to make and it was so good that I've actually done this two more times since making it for this video. You can see the second try, um, I've captured the end result as well. And the second one was really the best out of the three because somehow I managed to make it even more fluffier and I guess high, taller, higher, taller. Um, it was just, so good. These next clips are from our country house where we have these wild 
forest strawberries just everywhere around the property but of course the ones I'm using are the proper ones from the store and this time I'm making a sweet main dish now I, I think that this is quite a specialty of our country, the Czech Republic, because I don't see many other countries having sweet dishes as the main course, um, but here we love it. So again, I've cleaned up a whole bunch of strawberries and I'm making this sort of almost like a jam-like texture by adding sugar and then boiling that, that down a little bit. And this will be a topping for these sweet dumplings. What you see me here putting into the bowl is, I believe the translation for this is curd. It's not quite yogurt, it's not quite sour cream, something in the middle, and I believe the correct translation is curd. So I'm adding a whole bunch of that and then adding some eggs in as well. And then the last ingredient, super simple in terms of the ingredient list, is flour. But this, this is regular wheat flour. However, it is m milled, or yeah, I think milled is the right word, to a very coarse texture. It's not like your all-purpose um, super you know, fine flour. Hopefully you can see that here on the spoon and, and then what goes into the bowl, that it's just very, very grainy. So you want to mix that in and you, this, this part is where you just have to kind of, eye, not eyeball it, but you just have to see what the texture is like and if it gets to that right consistency because every time or at least for us here, every time we buy curd, it's just slightly different. Sometimes it's a little bit more liquidy, sometimes a little bit less, and that means every time you need to add a different amount of the flour into it. But you also kind of don't have to overthink it. Like as long as you can make these balls from the texture, that's that's really what you want, or from the, um, the mixture, that's what you want. So you saw me just wet my hands a little bit and then I'm making these relatively small balls and putting them on the counter, which I have lightly floured. And one more important thing, you saw me um, get the water for the dumplings boiling already. You don't, ideally you don't want them to be sitting on the counter for too long. So you want the water to be boiling before you start making them. And you saw after I made the first couple, we actually added a little bit more flour into the mixture. And then into the water they go. I'm very afraid <laughs> that I'm going to boil my, my, boil my hands here. And then once you put them in, you don't want to also like crowd the pot with it. Just add a few so that, I mean, you can kind of see how many we've added for the size of the pot. You want to stir it very lightly so that you're not damaging the dumplings, but just so that they unstick from the bottom of your pot. And then once they surface, you leave them cooking for another five to 10 minutes, and then take them out of the water and you pour the strawberry mixture over them. You add a little bit of sour cream and there are very few meals for me that have a bigger summer vibe than this. And the last thing I'm doing with strawberries is preserving them because I want to enjoy strawberries in the winter and I don't want to buy those that came to us from half across the world. So I'm um, again <laughs> preparing a whole bunch. I think this batch took me like 40 minutes or something to cut. It was, oof. It was a lot of work, but I know I will appreciate it in December when I want to have that strawberry pie again. So I'm just simply 
cutting them, putting them in these bags, and then stashing them in my freezer, nothing else. My mom has actually made a strawberry jam for us as well, so we have that to enjoy too. And so those were the three things that I've done with strawberries this summer. Hopefully I'll get to test out more recipes soon and I'll share those as well. That's it for me today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.